This is exactly when you'll know, guys. Take a quick second, like and subscribe, and then comment down below if you agree with this take or you don't. Make sure you grab some coffee or tea. Good evening around the world. Thanks for sitting in to the Narcology Morning Show. Cheers, guys. Well, guys, narcissists are so hooked on the way they do things, like the way they need your attention when they are in your presence with them. Let's say you are living with them. Uh, they're like a dog in terms of attention. If you've ever had a dog, you know when they fall asleep and you change rooms on them, you will hear them wake up and go into a frantic, you hear their paws looking for you. They have to be in the same room as their master most of the time. Sometimes they will go outside and do their thing. If they need to go to the bathroom, but for the most part, they have to feel secure in where you are at. And until you are stationary, they're not at peace. If you're moving around, they're curious of where you're going and they'll follow you wherever they go. Let's say you are folding laundry. They're always by your side. You're fixing your car, they're, they're laying down in the garage by you. They're not independent. They're always following you. But what happens when that routine is suddenly changed and you go sit down, type something out on the computer or folding laundry, you look to your right, they're not laying there. What goes on through your mind is, did they go out the front door? Did I leave the front door open? Because they're either by their water dish, food dish, or in the backyard using the bathroom where they got out the front and you want to make sure they're okay or God forbid that they're sick because they are so in their routine and you know how they tick. So when that routine is busted, what goes on through your mind is something is up. I need to check on them. So you go through the house, you see the front door is closed. So you sigh relief because you know they're probably in the backyard doing their thing. What you never see is them comfortably without you in the corner sitting down awake because they need their master. They don't let you move about without them knowing what you're up to. The same goes with the narcissist and they don't realize that we feel the same thing because of their neediness, their need for supply. And that routine is galvanized, especially if you are are that grade A supply because they need to extract from you on a daily basis and they're in this routine. They want to know exactly when you're coming home and how to extract that supply from you. If you can think back, um, they are like this loyal dog, but there is a, a difference between a narcissist and a loyal dog. The loyalty does not apply to a narcissist. And when we find out nothing has happened to them physically, when that routine is, is busted, the red flags really go up in our, in our heads because we know they need to constantly be on the phone talking to somebody or by your side. They always have a distraction, whether it be on the computer, but they always need to be doing something 24-7. It's the distraction from themselves is what they need. That's why you always see them playing video games or doing something. And it's usually talking on the phone when they're not talking to you, but they're always following you around the house to the bathroom. And uh, so we automatically think when that routine is busted, it's either A or B. They're either by your side or there is another person that they're with. And if you, 
if you don't come to this conclusion right away, you might be living under a rock because you know when that routine is busted. Because we saw their neediness as a funny quirk, but we also saw their neediness as love for us. And that couldn't be further from the truth. Love has a couple of byproducts that you can't beat with a stick, guys, and that's loyalty and compassion for you. Love is absent in a narcissist. They were needy with you because they actually needed you as their main distraction from themselves, guys. You were the one they deemed as the cure, someone who can distract them from themselves while giving them this amazing euphoric feeling because of the admiration and adulation you gave them. And that's coming from someone that they admired. All of these factors together made you the grade A supply, the cure. But when they see that getting low and start to get low on a regular basis, that you are a human being and not this godlike figure, of perfection. They get too close to their engine, their true self. You're not a good enough distraction. That euphoria goes down and they understand yet once again that they failed at finding the cure. Someone is going to give them uh, this sustained euphoria for life. See, the cure, finding that cure is the curse that they're under. And they don't understand that we are intuitive and they are galvanized in their routine. We know they need people. We know they need people like breakfast, lunch, and dinner when that is broken. That routine is broken. Something is seriously off. So when you know something is off and that dog isn't right there right next to you, laying down in the garage when you're fixing your car, folding laundry in the laundry room. Something is ajar. You think you left the front door open, and that's exactly what you did with a narcissist. They are actually out that front door, and there was someone else by someone else's side. And when you ask what they're up to, and you see the answer, their answer mixed with their reaction. It's like hearing a corny joke. And this is when you're, your heart of hearts, in your heart of hearts, you know the jig is up. And it's just a matter of finding out who this other person is because you know this person. But actually, Trying to figure out who this other person is, is when you find that the person that you were with wasn't a loyal dog, did not love you, that this person was a stranger. And you will see the eyes of a stranger while you're investigating who they are with, why they are with this other person. This is why it's so hard to tell people about how you feel. It's hard to articulate how you feel because there is no reference uh, point to this twilight zone because to articulate falling in love with a complete stranger and seeing nothing behind their eyes when you're discarded and you see them as this evil entity it's like the twilight zone or the invasion of the body snatchers you can't just tell people this isn't just a breakup this is a betrayal with an alien species that you built your life around. How do you articulate this to anybody? And this is why I formed the SEAL team, this community. 
I'm going to leave a link to my community, the SEAL team, underneath the video. I go live over there today. I also do one-on-one -on -one Zoom calls. But it's a great community if you want to check that out. If you need a Bible, join the SEAL team because it's all about God and what God in you and how to navigate around these strangers that appear to be in love with you is all about. Stay tuned for video two, guys. When you start to see them as evil after the discard, why is that? You don't want to miss this one. That's coming right up. Be blessed, guys. We'll see you in a bit.